guys, so having a lot of reptiles can get pretty pricey pretty fast. And I absolutely love to shop, but I also like to spend the least amount of money possible while I'm doing it. So I thought I would share with you guys how I save money when I'm setting up for reptiles or just owning reptiles as opposed to spending the crazy amounts of money that I could be spending. So most reptiles by nature are pretty secretive. They like to hide during the day unless they want to be handled. Especially with snakes, most of the time the way to remedy that is to get a vision cage. But vision cages can be very expensive. So what I do for the majority of my reptiles instead of spending the extra money on vision cages is I actually go to the Dollar Tree and buy black poster board. So what I do is I take that and I measure it for the sides and the back and I actually just tape that to the outside of the tanks and it blacks out the tank and it makes the animals feel so much better. Now for Zaz, she doesn't have black poster board. She actually has a banner that I got printed at Walmart. I just went on their website and got a two by six banner printed, whatever picture I wanted. And I just used that as her background and it fits perfectly. But I think that costs like 20 something dollars. So if you wanna save money and you just wanna darken up the cages, black poster board works amazingly. When I first put Sterling in his 40 gallon breeder, he didn't really wanna come out of his hide, but I just put those poster boards on the outside sides of the tank. And now he's out all the time. So doing something as simple as that can make the biggest difference. If you're having a problem keeping in humidity and you don't want to buy glass or plexiglass to go on the tops of those tanks or buy a whole new tank like a vision cage, what you can do is actually take tin foil and fold it and put it on top of the screen lid. Obviously you want to keep room for air to still circulate, but you're going to cover up a lot of that top. And if you have any kind of heat lamp on the top of your tank, the tin foil is going to be fine touching the heat lamp. And if you don't have a heat lamp on top of your tank or any kind of lamp that's going to get hot, you can actually just take a towel and wet it down and fold it and stick it on the top. I like to do this especially for my snakes when they're shedding because it traps in the humidity and then once they're done shedding, you just take it off and throw the tin foil in the trash or just take the towel off and they're good. They had a perfect shed and you were able to keep that humidity in. The next one also has to do with humidity. If you go to a pet store and you buy a mister, they're usually like eight or nine dollars for a small little bitty mister to mist your tanks down. But all you have to do is go to Walmart or Home Depot and you can buy a full gallon mister for like five dollars. <laughs> and it's such a better deal just because it doesn't have that brand name stamped on it and you got it from just a retail normal store. That saves you a lot of money. And that also goes for things like hides. You can actually go to Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever, their garden section and buy clay pots to use as hides. I know a lot of people do this, especially with like tarantulas, because you can bury the clay pot and they can go inside of it. And it makes a really good hide for really cheap. <laughs> Speaking of hides and clay pots, I almost always buy decorations online. Amazon is my favorite, of course, I talk about it all the time, but anywhere online, usually the decorations are gonna be cheaper than going to Petco, PetSmart and buying them. And usually you can get really good deals too. I know when I got Percy's hide, I got it from Amazon and they actually had a deal going where it was an add-on item and I only spent $4.99 for it. Instead of getting that same hide at a retail chain pet store near me for $10, $15, I only spent $5. So always shop around online. I spend so much time shopping around online trying to get the best deals on things. And I definitely don't think that you should get animals from retail chain pet stores, but supplies, Sometimes you kind of have to. Petco actually will compare their prices online to things that you buy in the store and their prices online are always cheaper than in the store. So for reference, I went and bought fish food yesterday and in the store it was $7.99 and online it was only $6.79. So just by showing them that it was cheaper on their website than it was in the store, you automatically save that money. So that's definitely something that you need to do. Anytime I go to Petco to buy anything supplies related like that, I always pull it off my phone and get the cheapest possible price. And still going with this buying online theme, buy your feeders online. Again, retail chain pet stores for crickets will charge 16 cent a cricket when you can go online and get them for so much cheaper. I always use joshesfrogs.com and I always talk about them because their prices are amazing, but you can get a thousand crickets on there for like $20 <laughs> and a lot of their feeders too, they don't charge shipping. So there's actually a section on their website where you can click 
feeders for free shipping and you can get like packs of feeders and not pay any shipping at all for them and they do wax worms and horn worms and crickets and mealworms and super worms and they just have a huge list of things they also do live plants and stuff like that but their feeders are super cheap and especially if you're feeding more than one animal or you have a baby bearded dragon that eats a lot of crickets i know when i got zazz at first i was having to order a thousand crickets every couple weeks because she would devour them when she was a baby so that saved so much money than trying to spend 16 cent per cricket at a pet store another thing is buying fish tanks when they're either on sale or buying them used on craigslist craigslist has tanks all the time for so cheap for my 55 gallon tank that i have my fish in i paid 35 dollars on craigslist and there was absolutely nothing wrong with it my 10 gallon exoterra that my girl gecko's in i think i ended up paying 10 dollars for that online i think it was on craigslist or like facebook marketplace or something and then i've never paid more than five ten dollars for 20 gallon longs because I always get them from yard sales or on Craigslist. And my 40 gallon tanks actually came again from Petco. They do every now and then they'll do a dollar per gallon sale and you can get a 40 gallon tank for $40. And actually technically it's a 50 gallon tank since it's a 40 gallon breeder and you only spend 40 bucks for it. So I always, always advise waiting and trying to find tanks for as cheap as possible because if not, you're looking at $150 for a 40 gallon breeder brand new or $100 for those exoterra tanks. Even Zaz's tank I bought for $89 at an after Black Friday sale. I've never paid full price for any of my tanks except for my Crested Gecko's acrylic tank which I got at a reptile show for $99 and I just really wanted one of those really bad. But all my other tanks have all been bought on sale or second hand because I never ever buy tanks at full price. You wait a little bit and you could save over a hundred dollars on a tank don't buy pets from local big chain retail stores they're very expensive a lot of the times they're sick because they come from huge breeding mills always try to buy your reptiles from reptile shows like repticon or straight from breeders which a lot of times you can find on like facebook or you can go online just know that if you do order them online, you will have to pay overnight shipping, which sometimes can run the price up a little. But most of the time, it's still going to be cheaper than going to your local retail chain pet store and buying animals. For reference, a normal ball python at the store will usually be about $60 to $80. Or if you just go to a Repticon, they're usually only about $20, $25. Repticon is a reptile show that travels all over the United States. You can go to Repticon.com and get a list of their showings and where they're going to be and when and who's going to be there and everything. So I always, always, always recommend going and getting animals there because they are cheaper. They are usually healthier because that is their job and they're doing what they love. So usually that means that they're taking good care of your animals. Just always double check and make sure. But you're going to save money that way. So definitely go Repticon or a local breeder near you or online. There's a lot of good breeders online as well. So if you notice in my tank decorating videos, most of my tanks are very heavily decorated and I don't buy all that stuff. Any driftwood that's in my tank, I actually go to my local river and get it that way and sanitize it because buying a piece of driftwood from a pet store or ordering online can cost so much money when all you have to do is go to your local river and get your own driftwood as long as you sanitize it and make sure to check state and local laws. I'm not telling you to go out and do anything illegal and steal driftwood or anything, but as long as it's okay, it's gonna save you so much money in the end. All you have to do is make sure that you properly sterilize it, make sure that there's no parasites or anything from that river that's gonna get into your tank. And you can look up online how to do that. I usually bake mine in the oven. You can boil it, you can bake it. There's methods of soaking it in disinfectants. There's all different ways to sanitize it. Just make sure that you sanitize it. Don't get anything from the river and throw it straight into your tank. But as long as you do that, you're good to go and you just save so much money and you got pieces of wood that you wanted, that you picked out, that you knew were good for your tank. So that's definitely always a possibility. The same thing like any big rocks or things like that you see in my tank. That's where I got them from. Just made sure they were sanitized and I'm always really happy with how they look in the end. I never throw things away. So if I am moving an animal to a bigger tank 
or just changing the tank, changing the decorations. I keep all those decorations in big totes and I keep tanks out in my shed. I do not get rid of them because I know I'm going to get more animals and it makes it so much easier when you go to a reptile show or whatever and you bring back an animal that you didn't expect to bring back, which happens to me, and I can come home knowing that I have all the things already to take care of that animal. Even if I'm not planning on getting an animal for a long time, it's still good to know that I would be able to get an animal that I wanted and not have to buy everything all over again, especially if I've already spent that money on tanks or decorations or whatever and also it's always good to have backups because heat pads do go out thermostats go out light bulbs go out the basking light dome electronics go out things break and it's good to always have backups just in case you need them so i never ever ever throw anything out i just put them all in a centralized location and put them away in storage. This last one is going to apply to some of you, but not all because I understand not everyone's going to have access to this. But if you can, build stuff yourself. I know that I get a lot of comments on Zaz's house, her enclosure thing, and my husband actually just built that out of scrap wood that we had. And it saved us so much money for a hide that she could fit in because she is really large and finding a hide that she's going to be able to fit in and also get on top of to bask is kind of difficult. Also, Percy's background is made out of cork bark because buying a background for her online was going to cost $30, $40. I spent like $12 on building her background myself, which actually I took that idea from Serp Design, which is a really cool YouTube channel. He makes amazing enclosures for his animals and sometimes just enclosures to make them. But yeah, anything that you can build yourself or craft yourself is gonna make so much of a difference financial wise. Just make sure that the materials that you use, whether it be the wood or the cork board or the silicone, anything that you use, make sure that it's gonna be safe for your animal. And most of the time, if you're using things like silicone or wood glue or things like that, you're gonna wanna make sure that you let it air out and set out because those fumes can be harmful for your animals. So just make sure everything's safe and you can save a lot of money building things, especially when you get into really big reptiles and enclosures for them. If you can build your own huge wooden enclosure for a monitor, that's going to save you so much money because wood isn't really that expensive. But yeah guys, I think that's about all the tips that I have for saving money. Those are just the things that I do to save money because like I said, I do not like spending large amounts of money on things that I know that I could get cheaper another way. So I hope that helped you out at least a little bit. That's all I can think of right now, but I'm pretty sure there's other things that I can do. If you guys can think of anything else, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below because I always love to save money. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. I put out new videos every single Sunday. And as always, I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Bye.